Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here. And in today's video, we're going to be breaking down the week five Thursday night football showdown slate on DraftKings. We got the Rams and the Seahawks playing uh, this Thursday night, which is going to be a really, really good game. Um, this is probably one of the better primetime games that we've had like all season. Um, I'm definitely excited for this one. We got a high total 54 uh, and a half total. So, you know, Vegas expecting a lot of points scored here, just a two and a half point spread. So we should expect a, a close game as well. This should definitely be a fun showdown slate. I'm excited to break this one down with you guys. As always, we're going to you know do like we normally do, go from top to bottom. I'm going to talk about all the playable options, all the guys that, have, that I do have interest in. And then towards the end of the video, we'll kind of hit on roster construction, talk through you know some different lineup builds, how I'm looking to build out my lineups, who you know I'm trying to play at the captain spot. Um, and always, you know, we'll always talk about proper way to build lineups, you know, proper correlation, how you should be constructing your lineups for, you know, every showdown slate. But before we get started with the breakdown, as always, I would appreciate it if you guys would drop a like down below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button as well. If you are new here, a very large majority of you that watch my videos are not subscribed. So please do hit that subscribe button and make sure to comment down below. Let me know some of your favorite plays for tonight's showdown slate. I'm always reading the comments, guys, always trying to interact with you. Um, so if you ever want to leave any feedback or if you want to just give some of your thoughts on this slate, you can do that down below in the comment section. And lastly, I do want to let you guys know that I will be live streaming on Thursday night, probably around 6.30 Eastern time. I'll be live on my YouTube channel, breaking down the slate once again with you guys, answering any questions you have. Uh, so if you ever need your questions answered, I'm always live streaming, usually for these primetime games, Monday night, Thursday night. You know, before the main slate starts on Sunday, I go live on Sunday mornings as well. Um, so definitely make sure you subscribe, got those notifications on, so that way you get notified when I go live. I will be live Thursday night, a couple hours before kickoff, um, you know, breaking down the slate with you guys. But let's go ahead and start off at the top. We're just going to work our way through the player pool. Most expensive guy on this slate is Cooper Cup, which is, you know, a little odd. We normally don't see receivers be the most expensive options. Normally quarterbacks are always the most expensive options. But Cooper Cup has been amazing this year. It, you know, it makes sense to see him at the top of the, the top of the, you know, price range. Getting massive volume, 10, 11, 12, 13 targets through four games. You know, been obviously just so, so good this year. Getting 100 plus yards in two of their four games, multiple touchdowns in two of their four games. Um, he's got five touchdowns on the season. Nothing negative to say about Cooper Cup here. The only issue is, you know, he is really expensive. If you want to play Cooper Cup, you're definitely going to have to probably look to some cheaper options. But, you know, we're going to hit on some value that, that there could be on this showdown slate. We got some guys questionable right now. I'm recording this video on Wednesday afternoon. We're going to have to keep an eye on the status of, of Daryl Henderson, Chris Carson, uh, Tyler Higby, Gerald Everett could maybe be back for this game. So if some of these guys wind up missing, you know, Carson's the one I think we definitely are going to have to monitor because he, it seems like his status is for sure up in the air. We could maybe get some value if Chris Carson gets ruled out, and that's going to obviously make it a lot easier to fit Cooper Cup in. Cooper Cup is clearly a top option on this slate. Um, nothing negative to say about him. But then when we get to the two quarterbacks, this is where I think, you know, a lot of my lineups will be started with is the quarterbacks. I tend to always try and build around the quarterbacks on these showdown slates just because quarterbacks give you such a high floor. Obviously, they have a ceiling as well, and especially a guy like Russell Wilson. We know Russell Wilson has a massive ceiling. He's one of those guys that can put up 30-plus DraftKings points any week. His floor is incredibly high. You know, Even though he's not throwing the ball much this year, which he normally never does, you know, rarely do we see Russell Wilson go out there and throw it 45 times. The, the Seahawks just don't you know, use him like that. He still is so efficient that, you know, even in like even in week one when he only had 18 completions against the uh, Colts, he still threw for 254 yards and four touchdowns, you know, 343 yards and two touchdowns against Tennessee on only 22 completions. Like he's just so efficient. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. It's a good matchup um, at home. You know, Ra the Rams have a good defense, but this is a, a high total game. It's projected to be high scoring. These are the type of games that I really like to target Russell Wilson in, these high-scoring, close games, which is what we're, we should have this Thursday night. Uh, Russell Wilson, I think, is my preferred quarterback of the two, but you could definitely play Matthew Stafford, and I think I'm going to have a lot of lineups with both quarterbacks on this slate. You know, Matthew Stafford been great so far this year with the Rams, at least 20 DraftKings points in every game except one. He's got, you know, 18 DK points in every game this season. We see Matthew Stafford, you know, show a ton of upside, even though He's not a guy that really has much rushing ability, which is the one negative. You know, Russell Wilson does give you some rushing upside. Stafford doesn't really have that, but they're going to let him sling the ball. 38 pass attempts against Tampa Bay week three. Last week against Arizona, uh, 41 pass attempts. He probably throws the ball 35, 40 times here in what should be a high-scoring game. Matthew Stafford, obviously a lot of upside for him as well. Um, I do prefer Russell Wilson between the two. I think Russell Wilson just 
probably is the better play overall. I think he gives you the dual threat ups or the dual threat ability just makes his ceiling a little bit higher. Uh, but you know, really, you can't go wrong with either quarterback on the slate. And like I said, I think I am going to have a lot of lineups with both quarterbacks. Um, I do want to talk about Prize Picks though. Prize Picks, the guys, they are the sponsor of this video. If you want to check out Prize Picks, use promo code Noah when you sign up over there. They currently have Russell Wilson projected for 22 fancy points. That is a pick that I do like going over on on prize picks and even Russell Wilson's passing yards. He's currently projected for 269 and a half passing yards. Pretty sure he's gone over this number in at least two of their four games, if not three of the four. Yeah, so he's gone over this number in two of their four games. And week one, you know, he only had 254 passing yards, but he came up close to that. I like going over on his passing yards and his fancy points. For the sake of this video, we'll just take the over on fancy points. Um, 22 fancy points, I think, is a little bit too low of a projection for Russell Wilson, you know, in what should be a, a very high-scoring game and which should be a close game. Plus, you know, with the with the injuries to the, the Seahawks backfield right now, Chris Carson pr might not play come Thursday. He did not practice at all this, this week. Um, they've already listed him as questionable for this game. Maybe if Chris Carson gets ruled out, we, we might see Seattle throw the ball a little bit more than they normally would. The upside for Russell Wilson in what should be a high-scoring game is definitely there. Um, 22 fantasy points, in my opinion, is too low of a projection. His projection should probably be like 23 and a half, close to 24. Um, so I like the over on 22 fantasy points for Russell Wilson. That's one pick I like on Prize Picks, and we'll talk about a few more throughout this video. But again, guys, if you want to check out Prize Picks, they're the sponsor of this video. Make sure to use promo code NOAH when you do sign up over on Prize Picks. You'll get your first deposit matched um, up to $100. But then you got the two Seattle receivers next up in price, DK Metcalf at 2000 uh, or 10,200, Tyler Lockett at 9600. You know, both Metcalf and Lockett are firmly in play for me. We know when Russell Wilson drops back to throw that he is looking for Metcalf and Lockett, you know, th so far through four games, we've seen 33 targets for DK Metcalf, just doing the math in my head quickly. Yeah, 33 targets for DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett on the other hand, not as many targets but still, you know, 25 targets for him through you know through uh, four games. Both these guys have a ton of upside. Between the two, I normally prefer DK Metcalf just because I think DK Metcalf is the the more talented receiver. But we know Lockett can pop uh, pop off at any game, any week. He can go out there and you know put up a big game any week. I'll be interested to see you know if Jalen Ramsey is going to shadow one of these guys. I think they'll probably just you know let Ramsey get one of them and then maybe he'll switch to the other. I don't know. I don't think Ramsey will just shadow one guy the entire game. I think they're going to just kind of move him all over the field. Some place he'll be on Metcalf, some place he'll be on Lockett. But between the two Seattle receivers, I think I prefer DK Metcalf. Both Metcalf and Lockett, though, you know, are very good options. You know, if you're looking for a receiver to play, and obviously, you know, on these type of showdown slates, when you have these type of games that expect to be very high scoring, I tend to play receivers, running backs, those guys at captain. Um, so yeah, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, definitely captain worthy. And obviously we'll talk about some captains I like, you know, towards the end of the video. But then you got the running backs. We'll talk about Daryl Henderson and Chris Carson next. So Daryl Henderson, last week, um, he missed week three, but then he came back last week against Arizona and he pretty much resumed his normal heavy workload. Played 90% of the snaps last week, um, got, or got 19 touches, 14 carries, and five receptions. Was very heavily utilized. He played 94% of the snaps in week one. It seems like when Daryl Henderson is healthy, he's going to be a workhorse back this season. Now, obviously, on a short week, you know, coming back from injury, does he play 90% of the snaps again this week? I guess we don't really know, but it seems like when Henderson's healthy, he's going to be out there for a large majority of the snaps. He's going to be the clear number one running back. Um, Seattle has been pretty bad against the run this season. I'm pretty sure they've actually allowed the most rushing yards per game to opposing running backs. Yeah, 514 rushing yards allowed to opposing running backs this season, which is the most in the league. Uh, just ahead of the Eagles. So it is definitely a good matchup for Daryl Henderson. He's my preferred of the two running backs. We don't even know yet if Chris Carson's going to play in this game. He did not practice all week. He's currently listed as questionable. Even if Chris Carson plays, I'm definitely worried about him. I don't think he's going to go into this game fully healthy um, if he does play. Plus, his workload's kind of been trending down. Like last week against San Fran, he only got 14 touches. The week before that, only 14 touches. Uh, against Tennessee, only got 13 touches. Like, he's not getting much pass game usage either. I don't know if I'm really going to go to Chris Carson on this slate. I'm definitely worried about him. Just the workload's been going down, plus he didn't practice all week. Um, we're going to talk about Alex Collins when we get down to the value. Uh, Alex Collins, I think, could be a really good value play on this slate, especially if Carson does not play. Uh, but Daryl Henderson, I do have a good amount of interest in at 8,400. He's currently questionable, but I assume he will play. Um, he was limited in Tuesday's walkthrough. 
We don't have an update yet. Like I said, I'm recording this video Wednesday afternoon, but I, I expect Henderson to be out there come Thursday night. Uh, but Robert Woods, I do like a lot, you know, sandwiched in between these two guys. Robert Woods, only 7,600 if you play him at the flex. I think he's someone that I'm definitely going to be utilizing a lot at captain on this slate. I think Robert Woods has enough upside to be a winning captain, and he's priced, you know, pretty affordably. Um, I think his captain price is only like 9, I think it's like 9K or something. Uh, oh, it's 11,400, but still, like, that's pretty low for Robert Woods in the captain spot. Robert Woods obviously has not been great so far this season. He's not getting much volume either. Um, only 25 targets through four games. We've seen Cooper Cup just con just continue to get uh, really dominate the targets on a weekly basis. I'm pretty sure Cup has like over 40 targets this season through four games. But there's definitely some squeaky will with Robert Woods. Um, we got a report like, or it was on Twitter. I saw that Robert Woods kind of was frustrated with the team, not with the team, but he was frustrated with his role, not getting as much targets as he would like, just not involved as much. And I think Sean McVay even came out and said that we need to get Robert Woods the ball more. So if you want to look into that narrative, we do have a little bit of a squeaky will narrative with Robert Woods this week. Uh, the coach came out and said that they want to try and get him the ball more. Robert Woods, I've been playing a lot this year. Um, on the main slate, he's been really, really affordable. He's pretty affordable on this showdown slate. He's someone that I do like a lot um, in this mid-range. I think I'm going to be, he's probably going to be one of my higher owned guys on this slate, and I think I am going to be utilizing him a lot in the captain spot. Um, just too cheap for, in a really good, you know, in this really good Rams offense, he's too cheap for their, for, you know, for them being their, or he, for him being their wide receiver too, only 7,600. I, I definitely like Robert Woods a lot. Uh, in this mid-range but then once we get down to like kind of the value tier below 6k you got Tyler Higby at 5600 Tyler Higby you know continues to be like an every down tight end I know he played every snap in weeks one and two and I'm pretty sure the last two weeks he's been like an every down tight end as well I want to confirm that real quick but yeah Tyler Higby so weeks three and four he did not play every snap but he did play every single snap weeks one and two 75 percent of the snaps week three and then last week 79 percent of the snaps Getting decent volume, you know, getting five to six targets a week. Um, obviously, that, you know, week two against the Colts, he didn't do much then, but six targets week one, five targets week three, six targets week four. Definitely have some interest in Tyler Higby. Now, he is probably kind of going to be like touchdown or bust. If he doesn't catch a touchdown, he's probably going to score like less than double digit DK points, but it is a good matchup against Seattle. I know Seattle has struggled against tight ends this season. Um, in terms of receiving yards allowed to tight ends, let's see. Where are they at? I thought they were towards the top of the league. I think they might be like middle of the pack. Um, but I know it is a it's a pretty favorable spot for Tyler Higby. This Seattle team, you know, you can definitely beat through the air. I do have some interest in him at 5,600. Then you got Van Jefferson at 4,800. Van Jefferson, big big week last week. Six targets, not or six targets, six catches, 90 yards, and a touchdown. His price has come up a little bit to 4,800. This is kind of a pretty high price for Van Jefferson for a receiver who's not really known to get many targets like last year when he was on the Rams he was just kind of like a big play guy like rarely did you see Van Jefferson get five six targets he usually would just get a few targets at most but it's this is a really good Rams offense they're obviously a lot better with Matthew Stafford at quarterback Van Jefferson I think has been playing a very large majority of the snaps even though he is like their wide receiver three um, he's still getting I think over like 50 60 percent of the snaps I do want to confirm that real quick so Van Jefferson these last few weeks 69% of the snaps week one, 92% week two, 77% in week three, and then 68% last week, week four. So yeah, I mean, we're getting receiver playing 65, 70% of the snaps on a weekly basis for 4,800. I don't know if we can expect six catches, 90 yards, and a touchdown, but if he's going to continue to get four to six targets on a weekly basis, yeah, he's definitely someone we can look to for value, both him and Tyler Higby. I have some interest in Freddie Swain. I don't think I'm going to go there. Um, just probably too expensive for my liking, 4,600. Um, he's not really someone that the Seahawks heavily utilize that much. I know he's seen some targets these last few weeks, but a lot of the you know targets from Russell Wilson, a lot of his pass attempts are going to be going to, to Tyler Lockett, to DK Metcalf. You just rarely see Freddie Swain get much volume. Um, I would rather play Van Jefferson. I'd rather play Tyler Higbee. If, if, if Freddie Swain was a lot cheaper, I'd have interest, but at 4,600, don't think I'm going to have much exposure to him. Deshaun Jackson, not going to get much volume, but always gives you that big play upside. Um, three targets last week against Arizona, five targets the week before that against Tampa Bay. Obviously, he had that very long 75-yard touchdown against Tampa Bay in week three. I mean, J Deshaun Jackson, you guys know, he's basically like touchdown or bust. If he doesn't catch a long touchdown, he's just not going to get enough volume to where he can put up like five, six receptions because he just doesn't play enough of the snaps. Like he's only played 32% of the snaps his last two weeks, 27% um, week one. 
he's probably going to play like 25, 30 percent of the snaps. He's probably going to run like 10 or 15 routes. You basically, if you play Deshaun Jackson, you basically got to hope that he catches a long touchdown or it's like busted coverage or something. I know in the Tampa Bay game, I think it was like busted coverage. He was wide open down the field, and obviously Matthew Stafford hit him. Could that happen here? Absolutely, it could. But for 4,400, I think Deshaun Jackson's expensive enough to where I probably won't be going to him. Um, Gerald Everett at 4K, we'll have to wait and see if he is actually going to play Thursday. Um, he did not play last week. He was on the COVID list. He has to, I think he has to test negative before Thursday's game in order to be able to play. If Gerald Everett does play, I think at 4K, he makes some sense as a value option. He should resume his role as, you know, the number one tight end for, uh, for the Seahawks. Pretty sure weeks two or weeks one through three, you know, yeah, he's playing a large majority of the snaps, 72% in week one, 80% in week two, 79%. In week three, you know, the Seahawks don't really utilize their tight ends that much, but I do expect Everett to play 70, 80 percent of the snaps if he's good to go at 4K. Yeah, he's for, for sure someone I'd have some interest in for value. If Gerald Everett does not play, then you could look to Will Disley at 3,800. So that's just kind of a wait and see. If Everett plays, I like him at 4K. If Everett's out, you could go to Will Disley at 3,800. Uh, then you got both the kickers. Fine, you know, to play one of those two. Um, rarely do I play both kickers, but you know, if you want to play one of the two for value, I think it's fine, but there's probably going to be other values. I do prefer like Tyler Higby, Van Jefferson, um, one of the Seattle tight ends, you know, Everett, if he plays Disley, if Everett's out, plus we have Alex Collins for value. I think Alex Collins is probably going to be the, ch the chalk popular value that everyone goes to. Obviously if Chris Carson does not play, then Alex Collins will be a staple of everyone's lineups. 3,200 is going to be super, super cheap for a starting running back if he is indeed the starter. Uh, but if, even if Chris Carson plays, there's a good possibility we still see Alex Collins pretty heavily involved. Alex Collins got 12 touches last week. Pretty sure he got a goal line touchdown as well um, over Chris Carson. I can't remember, but I know Alex Collins did find the end zone last week. Only 3,200. I'm expecting him to probably get 8 to 10 touches if Carson plays. And if Carson's out, I think we might just see Al Collins be the number one guy or number one running back. Clearly, they'll still utilize some other guys. Like we'll probably see Travis Homer get a little bit of involvement. We'll probably see DJ Dallas get a little bit of involvement. But if Chris Carson's out, you know Alex Collins is going to be the starting running back. And at 3,200, yeah, if we're getting a starting running back at 3,200, that's going to be a clear top value. So Alex Collins, obviously a smash of value. If Chris Carson's out, even if Chris Carson plays. I think Alex Collins is, is probably one of the better value plays on this slate because I'm not 100% confident that even if Carson does play that he's going to get a full workload because, you know, he hasn't practiced um, all week. But that's kind of it for the for the value. I don't think I'm going to be playing either defense on the slate. I think if, um, uh, if Chris Carson's out, you could look to like Travis Homer or DJ Dallas. I think both those guys would become playable. Probably would prefer Homer. I think Homer will get a few more touches than Dallas will. But yeah, both Homer and Dallas, if Carson does wind up sitting, you know, those guys will be the backup running backs behind Alex Collins. They would become cheap options that you could look to. But that's really it for this uh for this showdown slate. I think we kind of talked about like all the playable options. So hope you guys uh you know did enjoy this quick breakdown. Real quick before we do in the video, I wanna um kind of hit on rush construction, kind of talk through lineup builds, how I'm looking to build out my lineups, who I like to play at captain. You know, I think all these receivers especially like if you're playing a lot of lineups, I think you want to be mixing and matching these receivers at captain. So Cooper Cup, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Robert Woods. Um, those are the four guys I, I like the most at captain, but I think Daryl Henderson makes some sense as a captain option. I think Alex Collins, if Chris Carson is out, will be a really good value captain. Rarely do I go cheap at captain, but you know if, if Alex Collins is starting running back, obviously you could play him at captain because he's just so affordable. He's going to be a top value regardless. But I would say that Robert Woods might be like my favorite captain overall just right now. 11,400 does feel a little bit too cheap for him this week. You got the squeaky wheel narrative. You got the good matchup against Seattle. Good game environment. High total. You know, I'm, a, I'm liking the passing game on both sides here. Um, and if I'm playing Robert Woods at captain, I definitely want to pair him with Matthew Stafford. You always want to correlate. Normally, you know, we've seen sometimes if you have a receiver at captain that sometimes the quarterback won't be in the winning lineup with that receiver. But a very large majority of the time, if a receiver is the winning captain, a lot of times the quarterback is also going to be in that lineup. So if I'm playing Robert Woods or Cooper Cup or whoever at captain, Van Jefferson, Deshaun Jackson, Tyler Higbee, if I'm playing a Rams pass catcher at captain, I want to make sure to get Matthew Stafford in those lineups. And I also like Russell Wilson on this slate a lot. I think I'm going to have a good amount of lineups with both quarterbacks. So let's see if we can get both quarterbacks into this lineup. We play both quarterbacks with Woods at captain. We got about 5,100 left. 
per player. So we are going to have to try and find some value now. You know, we mentioned Alex Collins. I think it's a solid value if Chris Carson plays. If Chris Carson winds up out, Alex Collins will be the best value play on the slate. At 3,200, let's plug him in, see what that leaves us. That leaves us 6,100 left per player for our last two spots. You know, if we wanted to, we could go like Stars and Scrubs. Obviously, we got Collins as our value. We could play DK Metcalf and then just kind of jam in another value. So in a scenario where... Um, you know, where Chris Carson were to be out, then you could look to Travis Homer, you could look to DJ Dallas. Normally, I would not play, you know, two running backs from the same team in the same lineup on a showdown slate, but, you know, these Seattle running backs are so cheap that if we do get a scenario where Alec Collins is the, is the number one and then Travis Homer is the number two, I mean, these guys are so cheap that they could definitely be in the winning lineup together. So I think you could play, like, you could play Collins and, and Homer or Collins and Dallas together if Chris Carson's out. If Chris Carson plays, I wouldn't be playing Homer or Dallas, only Collins. Uh, but if Chris Carson is out, I think you could play like Homer and Collins together. Um, I think that would make some sense just because those guys are so cheap. Uh, they could both still pay off their price tags, um, even though they'll be splitting touches. But I do like that kind of build. Obviously, you don't have to go that route, though. Like you can maybe, let's see, you can maybe play one of these like mid-range receivers, so like a Tyler Higbee or a Van Jefferson. Plug in Van Jefferson, that leaves you enough to play like Chris Carson, which I don't love, but you could do that. You could go a little bit cheaper. Like, let's see. If we wanted to get Daryl Henderson into this lineup, we could maybe play one of the kickers. Or if Gerald Everett's out, we could play Will Disley. I'm obviously only going to play Will Disley if Gerald Everett's out. But that's another build you could do. But that's just kind of like how I'm looking at this showdown slate. Um, I think this is definitely a slate. I want to be playing both quarterbacks. I like both quarterbacks a lot. I think I'm going to be playing mainly receivers at captain. But if you want to play Daryl Henderson at captain, I'm fine with that. If Chris Carson's out, I do like Alex Collins at captain a lot. Alex Collins, if he is indeed the starting running back, um, he'll for sure be a very high-owned captain just because he's so cheap. He's going to project very well at that super cheap salary. Uh, I, I would probably only be using him at captain, though, if Chris Carson winds up sitting. But that's really the big news we're kind of waiting on. Again, I'm recording this video Wednesday afternoon. We don't have an update yet on Chris Carson. He They pretty much said he's a game-time decision, so that will be something to monitor heading up to Thursday night. As always, I'll be talking through this slate once again with you guys in the live stream Thursday night. Um, hopefully, we'll have news on Carson you know, when I go live, so we'll be able to talk through everything then. Make sure to tune into the live stream Thursday night. I'll be live on my YouTube channel probably around like 6.30 Eastern. Um, but I do want to give another shout-out to Price Picks again before we end this video, guys. Check out Price Picks if you, had not, if you have not yet. Make sure to use promo code NOAH when you do sign up over there. We did give over 22 fancy points as one pick I do like on Price Picks for this game. Another pick I like... To go with that one, you know, I've been talking about Robert Woods. I think we're going to see a big breakout game from Robert Woods at some point. You know, you got the squeaky wheel narrative about him coming out saying that he wants to get the ball more. Sean McVay even came out and said that they want to try and get Robert Woods the ball more, get him more involved. 15 fantasy points. I like going over on Robert Woods as well. That's another pick I like in this game. And then if you want to take the unders on Chris Carson, I kind of like those. Um, right now they have him projected for 13 fantasy points. They have his receiving yards at, let's see, where is it? 13 and a half, his receptions at, at two. I like a lot of the unders on Chris Carson. Um, even if Chris Carson does not play, you know, they'll just cancel that pick so you don't even have to worry about it. But I think if Chris Carson does play, there's a good possibility that he doesn't play his full workload. He doesn't get his full allotment of touches. So a lot of his unders I like, especially these passing unders, like the receptions, the receiving yards. Chris Carson's not really been utilized much in the passing game lately. Um, his receptions, like these last few weeks, have been minimum, like minimal. Only one reception last week, just two receptions the week before that. Week two against Tennessee, he was not targeted at all. Like his pass game usage has not been really good lately at all. Um, so I've kind of like under two receptions for Chris Carson, or if you want to take under 13 and a half receiving yards, I like that as well. Again, if Chris Carson doesn't play, they'll just cancel that pick. If he does play, I think there's a good possibility that he doesn't even see his full allotment of touches. So under two receptions, under on his receiving yards, I like all those props. Even his fancy points, if you want to take the under there, that's another one I like. But um, these are a few picks I like for, for Thursday night's game. Again, guys, if you want to check out the full board, you can see everything Prospects has to offer for this game. You can check out their entire board for the Sunday main slate as well. Prospects, very simple. You just pick the over or the under. They have all their projections up. They have player props as well. Um, you can win up to 10 extra money. You can make up to five picks, win up to 10 extra money on prize picks. So check them out. Make sure to use promo code NOAH when you do sign up for prize picks. Uh, link down below in the description. But yeah, that does it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy. Be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button before you get out of here. And I think that's it, guys. Best of luck on the slate. We will see you in the next video. Peace.